All right. So that one's a, a, a an equation that has not many numbers in it, right? And uh, we don't necessarily like that too much, right? But the thing is, if you know how to solve an equation, you know how to solve any equation, no matter if there's numbers in it, letters in it, whatever the hell it's got, you always do the opposite operation. So on this problem, uh, 35, this here, right? And it says to solve for Q. So, whenever you solve an equation, I don't care what's in there. If it says solve for whatever, you say, why is that thing not by itself yet? Because the whole point is trying to get it by itself. Then you know what it equals. Why is Q not by itself? What's with the Q? 30. What's the operation between the two? So, of course, in solving equations, we always do the opposite so that it will cancel, right? So, what's the opposite of multiplication? Division. So, what do I do to both sides? Divide by the thing I don't want there anymore, the 30, right? So, Q is not by itself because that stupid 30 is there with it. It's multiplying by the Q. So, how do I kill it? <coughs> Divide by 30, right? That would get rid of that 30. I don't want the 30. I want Q by itself. You're all looking at me like I'm insane. That's true, but not for the reason, not for this, right? So I'm trying to get you, right now this is, this is solved for P. P is by itself, I know what P is, P is 30 times whatever Q is. That's nice, I need to know what the hell Q is. So to get there, I divide, if I divide this side by 30, I have to do the other side by 30, so I keep the balance, right? Both sides are 30 less, so they're still equal to each other, right? 30 times smaller. So that cancels, so then P over 30 is Q. Done. How are we doing? I can't read most of you, it's amazing. Is that cool who asked that question? That's good? All right. I kind of do it, but you just need to like refresh it. Gotcha. That's the whole point of chapter nine is the whole thing should be refreshed time, right? Yes? Um, number so let's hold off on that. Uh, we'll do those word problems here in a bit. We're going to focus on those. So I'll make sure I do number 63 at some point. The one after 35, 40, um, three multiply times two. Beautiful. Both sides. So if I, yeah, exactly. If I have an equation and uh, they like Q, and my equation has a fraction in it, the really nice thing is, since it's an equation, what am I allowed to do in an equation? I'm allowed to do anything that I want you just about to both sides, as long as I do it to both sides, right? I can take the square root of both sides. I can multiply both sides by 18 billion. I could divide both sides by 1.7. None of that shit's good for this problem, right? A really good step on this problem, I'm trying to solve, it It says solve for R. My R is right there. That sucks for a couple of reasons, but the biggest and most important thing that sucks about this is that stupid over two. It's making a fraction out of the whole thing. The R is stuck on top of there. So how do I kill that over two? And of course this bar, of course, means Division. So this is this thing divided by 2. How do I kill that? Multiply. Multiply both sides by 2. That's awesome. Yeah. So if I have an equation with fractions in it, I can kill the fractions. People get a little too optimistic and they start killing fractions everywhere that they see them, right? And fractions have nightmares about you. <laughs> but uh, since it's an equation, I can multiply this by 2 and kill it because multiplying the other side by 2 balances it out. If it was not an equation, I could not do that. Cool. All right. So then what happens on this side? Yeah, good, the cancel. Don't have this somehow stay alive and go through there like zombie 2. 2 is dead, buried, gone. Right? Cancel. So now what do I have? Here this is... 2Q equals P minus R. Good, good, good. I'm trying to solve for R. 
Yeah, you can subtract P. I like it. Then at least get negative R by itself, right? And then I can do one last thing there. So if I subtract P from both sides, what's 2Q minus P? 2Q minus P, I love it. Keep S. It's not L or something. You don't count through the alphabet. So I don't know what the L it is, right? So just write 2Q minus P. And what do I get on the other side? Yeah, for some reason, people get that point a little negative. That's there, negative R. Do you guys understand the process? This problem here doesn't matter. This problem doesn't matter. The process matters. Do you understand the process? And because the process is independent of the problem. You're pretty much always doing it. If there's a fraction, kill it. If there's a multiplication of your variable, divide. If it's adding something, you subtract it away. Whatever you have to do to, uh, to unbury your variable. Right? Uh, so what are you going to do to both sides now? It's not R by itself yet. Divide by negative one. Either way, I love it. Multiply by negative one or divide by negative one. I don't care. Either way, it's going to kill that negative, right? Normally, we see it as division, but whoever said divide, uh, multiply, I like you. You're cool. You, that would happen, too. That would work. So you could stop here, but really, a better thing to do, what is 2Q minus P divided by a negative one? What happens? Can somebody close that door? It won't do too much for us because there's a vent in it, but... I'm not sure what's going on out there. I'm sorry, what are you guys saying? Good. 2Q divided by negative 1 is negative 2Q. Negative P divided by negative 1 is plus P. Kick ass. So there's a gimme. All right. Anything else? Yes. Oh, yeah. That's probably the most disgusting problem in there. You know, before the word problems, anyway. Um, so four six, that's funny. That's funny. All right. So what? What happens, or what can I do here? For some reason, I didn't notice this before. Somebody asked me this problem before, but do you see a fraction in there, something about it, that would strike you, something about one of those fractions in there? Four sixths. Yeah, what about four sixths? It's two thirds. Yeah, you could reduce it. And what's nice about reducing fractions in this case? What do I have to consider in this problem? I have to find the... Oh, yeah, and if I can make one of the denominators smaller, that makes finding the LCD easier, right? So let's rewrite this. This is 2 thirds T plus 8 ninths. 4 sixths is 2 thirds. This is a lot better now. Now watch. If I can figure out an LCD for everything, I can then cancel all the bottoms out. Right. If I can make all the bottoms the same, if all the bottoms were 20, if this was over 20, over 20, over 20, over 20, I could just do what to both sides? Multiply, Multiply by 20. Then all the bottoms would cancel, no more fractions. That sounds very promising, right? What the hell is the LCD? 36. 36. It's always got to be a number that everything can multiply to be, right? Look at this real quick. What is 9? 9 is 3 times 3. 4 is 2 times 2, but nobody else has a 2. So the LCD has to have two 3s, right? Because there's one 3, but there's two 3s. It has to have two 3s and two 2s. Two that's 4, right? So what's 9 times 4? 36. So it's got to be 36. So the LCD has to be a number that all the numbers on the bottom can multiply up to B. So it, it, in effect, the LCD has to have all the bottoms in it. 36 has a 3 in it, has a 9 in it, has a 3, has a 4. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. So how do you make each one of these into 36? This guy, you got to do what? 3 times 12. Got to multiply by 12? Kick ass. 4? 12? And 9. Trying to figure out how to make a 36 to the bottom, right? 
you stop there for a second. This is not the only way to do this problem, but it's a decent way to do it. If you can kill all the fractions first, you're much less likely to make a fraction mistake because there are no fractions, right? You should be able to handle fractions, but why would you if you don't need to? Okay, don't worry, I'm going to give you plenty of problems where you can't get rid of the fractions. In case you're worried. So that, what does this become? 24 36t plus 32 over 36 greater than or equal to 24 over 36 minus 9 over 36t. So now I've got everybody divided by 36, so I'm going to come in and do what to kill that? Multiply by 36. That's going to cancel out the division, right? Do you guys see that? This is a general process now. If you have an equation or an inequality with a bunch of fractions in there, make them all the same on the bottom because then you can kill all the bottoms. You can multiply by that. Isn't there something about multiplying across the, uh, the, of, um, the inequality sign? Yeah, if you multiply or divide by a negative number, it's got to flip. I'm going to multiply by positive 36, so I'm okay. Yeah. So if I multiply both sides, so everybody by 36, All those bottoms cancel. So now I have 24t plus 32 greater than equal to 24 minus that. Looks a lot better. That's as far as I'll go. I'll let you guys finish that out. Because the biggest problem with that problem is the fractions. Once you get the fractions out of the way, you should be able to handle the rest of it. And again, if you did that one a different way, you're fine. You're pretty, as long as you got the right answer. 16. Is this 16? Uh, oh, this was 16. 60. All right. What's up? How are you? You all right? You're okay. Okay. All right. You guys can finish that out, right? Of course you can. Yes. I have faith. Right. Anything else from homework? Um, oh, let me get Trent real quick. He's been waiting for a while. Well, I'm doing it on my math lab. Sure. Um, I've got one of those ones where it's, uh, can I read the question? Oh, hold on to it. Okay. We'll do it with uh, uh, Trent. I'll come back. Right. Yes. Good. Yes. Uh, and did I show you guys why that's true? Did I show you why you flip the inequality sign? No? Okay. All right, let me show you. You ready? It's kind of silly why it's true. Uh, which one of these is bigger? One. One, right? All right. Multiply or divide by negative one both sides. What will happen? No matter if I multiply or divide, what happens? This becomes a two. This becomes a which one's bigger? Two. What the sign? Do? So why do we switch the sign when we multiply or divide by negative one? Because I love that answer. What are variables? Variables are numbers that I don't know yet. So whatever numbers do, variables have to also do. So if you multiply or divide by negative, it changes the side. Like if I draw a number line, where is negative 2? Down there. Where is 1? Up there. If I multiply by negative, it changes the side they're on. Do you see that? So the smaller becomes the bigger, the bigger becomes the smaller, the student becomes the master. Right? Sorry. Is that cool? So this problem here, I like this problem for a couple reasons. Um, which one was that? Was, uh, which one was it again? 50. There it is, 50. <coughs> Oops. So a couple things about it. How do you get that n by itself? I would hate to have to divide by negative one half. My God. Beautiful, right? Whenever you have a fractional coefficient, how do you kill it? You multiply by its reciprocal. That should hopefully sound familiar to most of us. And the reason that is is because if you take a fraction and multiply by its reciprocal, it reduces to 1, right? Always. It must. 
because they'll cancel. It'll be the same on the top and bottom. It'll become one. And we want a one in front of the end. That tells me I've solved for n, right? How would we do it? All right. So then if I multiply both sides by negative 2, what happens? The negative 2's cancel. So I get n. Good. That flips because I multiply by a negative. And then you have to graph it, give it to me in interval notation. How do I graph this? Let me make sure you guys remember that. Yeah. Now let's go past open circle. I think I already showed you guys this. Uh, in fact, it won't be an open circle, will it? Closed circle. So don't use circles anymore. Let's use something better. All right, so uh, if I want to use a closed circle, that means I want to include it, right? I want to include that negative 8 because it's allowed to equal negative 8. Are you guys Are you with me? Okay, so what we're going to use instead, to re the way to remember this is the letter I. If you take a little bit of it off, it's a bracket. You want to use a bracket to show it is included, like part of an I. If you want to use an open circle, you should use parentheses to show that you exclude, you don't include it. Right? So the way I would do this, which way am I going to shade? The way this points, right? Up. So I want to put a bracket, shade it up. Cool. So if that equal sign wasn't there, it would have been parentheses, shade it up. Okay. And then how do I write this in interval notation? Yeah, negative 8 from negative, so it's always smallest up to biggest. And what's the biggest it gets? Infinity. Use that symbol bracket there, see? If it was a parenthesis, I would have had a parenthesis there. And can you ever get to infinity? No. No, so I can't include infinity because I can't even get to it. It's always a tick in my hat, stupid hat. I can never get there, right? So I have to parenthesis. If you put a bracket on it, I want you to come see me. You found infinity. That's freaking me out. I would think you would have become pure energy. Like powder, if you ever seen powder. You're running into lightning. It's pure energy. Right? you got to tell me when that happens, because that's cool. All right. Maybe, maybe. So this is what they mean when they say interval notation. And we should know how to graph this, right? And then the freaky thing about the inequality flipping is actually just because it's that's what happens with numbers. That's how numbers work. So that's why it's got to happen. Okay, cool. Anything else? All right. So let's do word problems. Let's focus on that. Uh, let's look at the handout a little bit, y'all. So, word problems, of course, are traditionally the most hated thing, which is unfortunate because it's, it's the connection between math and English and the real world, right? A lot of word problems that we see in this class, since we're just learning the algebra, a lot of the word problems you see, you can solve them a different way. But if you don't use algebra, I'm going to take all the points off, basically. Right? Because we're in algebra class. Did I already give that little analogy about if you were in driving class? No? If you're in driving class, and, and I was your driving instructor, and I said, okay, get me from here to the, uh, to the mall. And you say, okay. And you get out the car, and you pick me up, and you run to the mall, and say, we're at the mall. Uh, yeah, we're at the mall, but I'm not going to give you any points because this is freaking driving class. You're supposed to drive me to the mall. So we're in algebra class. So I don't care if you get the right answer. I know that sounded harsh. But if you get it the wrong way, it's no good. In fact, what's more important than the answer right now is the process. Do you understand the process? If you make a stupid little mistake and you get the wrong answer, nobody dies yet. 
If you're in the real world, somebody might die, the bridge you're trying to construct might fall, it's no good to get the wrong answer in the real world, but here it's the process. If you can't even get the process now, you ain't got a freaking chance to get the right answer later. You kind of would. So showing your work is important, using algebra in algebra class is kind of a gimme thing to expect, right? So don't get upset at me. If you don't use algebra and you get the right answer, the problems are you working with are simple. They're relatively simple. You should be able to kind of like guess and check and all that kind of stuff. This is not intermediate guess and check. All right, so intermediate algebra. Okay, enough of the PSA, public service announcement. Um, word problems, I desperately try to get you to understand. That I think most students, you guys, for some reason you think you're supposed to read the word problem once and know exactly what to do. That is insane. Nobody can do that, right? We all have to kind of do some, some people can do it in your head, but you still go through some steps. You go through steps. So the first thing you do when you read through a word problem is, not, you don't even care about the numbers. You don't care about the three more than, twice this. You don't care about any of that shit. You just care about what are the players in this problem. So for the first one, it's talking about a triangle on its side. So it makes sense that there's three players. Don't say side one, side two, side three. Why does that kind of suck related to the problem? It says a certain triangle has a perimeter of 28 feet. If the largest side is 10 times as large as the shortest, right? I want to use the same language that's used in the problem. So as a student and probably as me, it's easier to see where things came from. You with me? A little bit, a little tiny bit. So I got a largest side. Uh, and it's a good idea to draw, so just draw some kind of triangle, doesn't matter what it looks like, as long as it's triangular in shape. Uh, I got a largest side, a shortest side, and then a middle side, right? So use the exact same language that's used in the problem. Now, I understand you know, the unfortunate thing about using such simple problems is that students tend to like, you know, what the hell good is this shit? What am I? Triangle. Just look at the damn triangle. Or you got Fred who forgot how much money he put into his bank account. You're like, Fred, you got bigger problems. You're forgetting how much money you put in your bank account? So if, as a student, I'm sure you've read through some of these and you went, why do these people not know this? But the whole point of all the problems we do is just to get this process down. Because in real life, we see things, and there's a lot of things that went into it. We've got to work backwards to see how it got to that point. And that's what algebra does really well. It works backwards. So, uh, the, the, when you have a geometric problem or something where the shape is a good idea to draw so you can label it, do it. If it's a discount off of a shirt, you don't have to draw a shirt. It's not going to help you, right? <laughs> but here's a good idea to draw a shirt. The next, the, the, the really first most important part of a word problem is what is just X? And math is a foreign language, so we are translating from English into mathish, right? Uh, so tell me, why does it make sense? And you can see on this that I picked the shortest side to be x. Why does that make sense? If you look at your little handout. Beautiful. The largest side is ten times as large as the shortest. The middle side is two more than twice the shortest. So if I knew how long the shortest side was, I know exactly how long the other two sides are, right? So the most important step really is what's just x because everything else builds off of that. So x is going to be the thing that everybody else depends on. So if I call the shortest side x, the largest side is 10 times as large. 10x. 10 times as big as this, so it's going to be 10 times that. See, once you know what x is, you know what everybody else is. Uh, the middle side is two more than twice the shortest. I like it. Two more than twice the shortest. Kick ass. Now, what are those all supposed to do? So if I wanted to, I could label my little picture. Well, that looks like the shortest side. Doesn't matter. It's not the scale. Thankfully. So all three of these have to add up to be 28. Cool. The funny thing about perimeter, some of you guys know a perimeter formula, 2w plus 2l. Maybe some of you guys know that. If you don't, that's almost better because you, you don't know any perimeter formulas. You shouldn't have to know any of them. How do you get the perimeter of any shape? 
add up all the outside sites, right? Add up all around the outside. Walk the perimeter, Johnson. I'm going to walk around the freaking building, right? Around the outside. So that's what perimeter is. I don't have to know any perimeter formulas. Area, shit, I got to know those formulas because that's a little bit freakier. But perimeter, I just add up all the sides. So the perimeter of this is add up all the sides, and I know that that's supposed to be 28. And now, of course, this should be the easy step. The hard step should be getting to that freaking equation. The easy step should be solving that equation. So how do I solve that equation? Beautiful. So I have how many x's? 13. Yeah, 10, 11, 13. Minus 2. Minus 2. 13x equals 26. Divide by 13. x equals 2. Now, of course, if you circle that and go to the next one, that's no good. The beautiful thing about doing this, and I know... A few, a, a decent number of you are just not going to do this step. Number one, you're not going to set up the right equation. You're, you normally people forget this poor dude because you're like the ten times and two more than twice, and your brain says you got plenty of x's in there, you're fine. But then you got twelve, and does twelve go into twenty-six? No, and you get these freaky ass side links. No. So if you don't do this, number one, you normally set up the wrong equation. That sucks. You don't have a chance. And number two, you don't get this neatness. X is 2, so the shortest side is 2. 2 what? Feet. So what's the largest side? 20. 10 times 2 is 20 feet. And then what's the middle side? 2 times 2 plus 2? Six. 6 feet. And what were these supposed to do? And they do. Check. Right? That's a way to check it at the end. Make sure it does what it's supposed to do. Are, you, are we going to use the name to up the units? Yes. And I'll actually, even more than you lose points, I'm going to be a complete dork. I'm going to say, so if you didn't put feet, I'm going to say something like, light years? Bananas? You know, I'm going to be a, I'm just going to be a dork. It's too damn good. Let's deal with it. So don't forget your units. I'm also a scientist at heart. So if you just tell me three, I'm like, three what? A totally three tons or three ounces? That's a little bit different. Right? Some of you guys are like, dude, shut up. Too bad. Numbers are nice. Real world problems, you have to have units to go along with. Right? You guys know about that Mars uh, polar, the, the Mars thing that uh, they had the wrong, we did uh, feet, and the rest of the world, of course, uses metrics like they should. And so we sent this ship up programmed with feet in it. So it's like, oh, we're almost to the bam, and it slammed into the planet. Oh, sh oh shit. <laughs> so we used the wrong freaking units. So we spent, you know, a good billions of dollars on that, and it's, you know, defunct on the surface of the planet. Too bad for us. So units are a little important. Um, all right. You can read through the second example, but I, 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 I want you to go ahead and try to do, some of you guys might have done this already, try to do the two problems at the bottom. Go ahead and try to do the two problems. The second one, I would definitely draw the picture of the first one. You don't have to draw Bob and Fred, unless you want to. That's fine. Oh, sure. I have one left if anybody needs that. Uh oh. Oh, you got it already? Oh, good. I have two.
ask us to write a graph on this. Oh yeah, so I skipped this. That's my mistake. Okay, or do that. I like that. I just don't know what's that. Hmm? I, I, I don't want to say that one's not going to hold. It will to the one. Get this. Oh yeah, I just forgot to exclude those. Because it said to do it in the graphic calculator, right? Mm -hmm. And we don't need the graphic calculator for 103. So. I meant to skip them and it didn't. So that was my mistake. Try to let's look at number one real quick. I think let's at least set something up for number one. I've given all mine away, so can I look on yours real quick? So we got Bob and Fred. Who's gonna be just X? Uh, it says uh, Bob makes three hundred less than twice what Fred does. So I have to know what Fred makes first to work back out what Bob makes. Does that make sense? It's actually, if you allow it to be, it's relatively easy to figure out which one's just X. It's the one Bob makes, blah, 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 that Fred, okay, it's got to be Fred that's X, because then I can do all that shit I just, oh, I just glanced over to, to Fred's money, right? So Fred makes X, Bob makes 300 less than twice that. Oh, yeah, oh, okay, sure. <laughs> I was free. Uh... And, and, and that less than is really evil. Number one, it's not an inequality, right? They would have to say something like five is less than something. That would be the, the inequality symbol. You with me? Another thing that's evil about less than is what's three less than ten? What's three less than ten? Seven. So how'd you get that? You did ten minus three. Three less than ten is ten minus three. So three less than twice Fred is twice Fred minus 3. So the biggest mistake is people write 3 minus 2x, and then Bob makes negative money. So he basically pays to go to work. Thanks for letting me come in. Here's my 100 bucks for the week. I'll mop in and do some. Here's an extra 50 because I did some extra work. It's like, damn, Bob, what the hell? 300. 300, thank you. So, yeah, it's better. Well, Bob was happy with me taking less off. Um, now, what are these two supposed to do? Now, so here we are. The two players, that's the first step. So I don't care about the math at first. I don't. You just write Bob and Fred. That's what's involved here. Then you write which one is just X. Then you build the other ones off of that. Here we just had one more. And then you step back and you say the equation is going to come from what these two are supposed to do together. Very often they'll add to be something. Sometimes they might subtract to be something or divide to be something. Who knows? But in this case, of course, what do they do? They mean 1950 together. Together. So then what operation? <laughs> yeah, I want to take Fred's money and add Bob's money. So together that implies addition, right? So together they made 1950. And now we should be at the easy step. Should be. Right. Uh, so I think some of you guys already told me that was 3x. I can do well with this. So 3x equals 2250. How do I know that 3 goes into this even before I do it? Do you guys know how to check that? 3 will go into any number if the digits add up to be a multiple of 3. People know, people know these things less and less. They're starting to teach them less in high school and, and before that, obviously. Right? 2 plus 2 plus 5 plus 0 is 9. 3 goes into that, so 3 is going to go into 2250. Isn't that kind of neat? A little tiny bit. 3 will go into any number where the digits add up to a multiple of 3. This is a fact. 9 will go into any number if the digits add up to a multiple of 9. Kind of like because 3 and 9 are kind of based off of each other. It makes sense the rules are very similar. You, you guys semi with me here? So it's just 3 and multiple of 3? 3 will go in any number that, where, that they sum up to any so multiple like of 3. So if they add up to 6, then that. 9 is the same kind of way as add up to multiple of 9. 4 has its own rule. 4 will go into any number where the last two digits are divisible by 4. So will 4 go into 2250? 
Is 50 divided by 4, is that possible to get a whole number? No, so 4 won't go into that. But 4 will go into 19429967282 because does 4 go into 28? So 4 will go into that number. It's amazing to me how few people know that anymore, right? Well, calculators, screw calculators. We should just know simple stuff like this so we're able to handle numbers better in everyday life. And if you don't have to handle numbers in everyday life, I am sorry for you. You're not doing much. I feel bad for you. All right. I hated it when they took away the change thing. Now it comes out automatically. Like, That's the one place people get practice on freaking math. And now it comes out automatically. Right. Uh, so when you divide by three, what do you get? 750. 750. I'll lock it. So what does that represent? Fred's. That's Fred's money. So come back up here and do 350. 750, Jeff. Yes, no memory. And then how do I get Bob? Yeah, X is 750. So twice 750 is 1500 minus 300 is 1200. Do these do what it's supposed to do? Yes. Yeah, they add up to be 1950. That's a nice last check. Make sure they do what they're supposed to do. Cool. Some of you look remarkably bored. Bored is a good way to be. Because that means you know this stuff. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Oh, uh, what's X? Oh, so what's twice 750 minus 300? It'll be 1500 minus 300. Cool. Yeah. So once you know what X is, Bob is based on X. you gotta just got to throw that number in. So don't stop here and circle it and keep going. Tell me all the parts of the problem, right? I like it. All right, so how are we doing on, number, on the second one? Number two, yeah. Did we, ask, did we start it? No. If you guys are done, I love it. The rest of you are like, I'm just waiting for you, man. All right. <laughs> and just being honest. Let me see. Uh... So the, uh, I'll point out a couple mistakes people make on this problem. Uh, really good idea to draw a picture. Um, the length. So what are the players in this? The length and the width. And together they do something with the perimeter. So that's not really a player. It's what they do together, right? That's where the equation is going to come from. So the length and the width are the players in this problem. Which one of them is just x? Good. Or you need to use W. You can use whatever letter you like. You need to use a little happy face. All a variable is is a placeholder for a number I don't know. You could actually use whatever symbol you want. Greek letters, Russian letters, I don't care. I'm waiting for somebody to do that. So do it. Um, so if I call the width, we'll just stick with X for now. So the length is what? Six three. Yeah, four less than three times the width. Kick ass. So one big mistake is people make a 4 minus 3x. You get a negative answer, and then you just circle it. And I'm like, wait a minute. How the hell do you get negative side length? Right? I don't want to go to your house. It's weird. Is it like a black hole? <laughs> yeah. I love it. So that's why that formula exists. But we don't even need to memorize it. If you label the biggest mistake, so here's the different levels of mistake. If you label the picture, that's good. It'll help you. But here's the biggest mistake I see is, is somebody tells me that this is how you set up the equation. And of course, what's wrong with that? Huh? That's actually only one side, right? So if you're trying to build like a pen for your pet lion, but the neighborhood said you got to build this, and you do that, your lines be like wall, meat, hello, and then go off and eat the neighborhood. This is bad, right? You want to actually fence the damn thing in. So the person that did this skipped all this stuff, and they saw the expression four less than three times. Oh, there's four less than three times. The number is thirty-two. There's no thought behind it. It has to actually make logical sense. That is one side. And then the next thing is somebody does this, which is a little bit better. They did this. They do that, but that's only. That's only halfway. 
So to be honest, if you're smart about this, you can actually do it. If you're clever about how to set this up, you could say x plus 3x minus 4 equals 16. Because that's halfway. Right? If all the way is 32, halfway is 16. Well, let's not do that. Let's go straightforward. So I like the way you said it back there. Well, let's keep that straight. Uh, I would say x plus 3x minus 4 plus x plus 3x minus 4. So that will be 2x's and 2 3x's minus 4. That's awesome. Either way you do it, you're going to end up with the same kind of like term stuff here, right? How many x's do I end up with now? Yeah, 4, 4. I got 8x minus 8. Let me stop there for a second. How are we all doing? Are we good? Do not forever hold your peace. This is a really good time to bring up any issues. Because several sections in this semester will have their own word problems associated. So don't just think there's one section and you don't have to worry about it ever again. No. All right. And then solving this should be easy. How, how do I keep going? At 8. At eight. Divide by 8. Good. That's the width 5 what? Don't make me be a dork. 5 feet. Like Jeff, man, you're a dork no matter what, dude. So it means nothing to do with us. And then this will be what? Now, x is 5. 3 times 5 is 15. Minus 4. 11 feet. And sure enough, 11 plus 5 is 16, and you got a couple of those, that's 32. It, it does work. Kick ass. Okay, good. All right, most of you guys are at least looking my direction. Okay, good. All right. Oh, I want to, let me go ahead and give you this. We, we focused a lot last time on factoring. I don't think I had copies of the factoring handout that was on my website. Let me go ahead and give you a copy of this. This is a little, huh? Okay, I'll give you one. It's a little overwhelming. <laughs> the very top is kind of like a quick reference guide, and then the bottom is like a really in-depth explanation of how each one works. So, you've got this if you want. You cannot use this on a test. Go ahead and ask me, but I would definitely have it sitting next to you as you do homework. Yeah, anyway, okay. I like it. Like I do, we'll see. Yeah. I just lost count. We'll see what happens there. Uh, every other day I can count. I'm not like doing numbers. Oh, you're good. Okay. Oh, yeah. So we can talk about that a little bit more. So let me do the, let's look at the word problems that people ask me about. They were number 63, and then Trent, you have one from online, right? Let me do 63 first, and then, let's see. So 63 is interesting because it's a, uh, it's like a direct translation into mathish. <laughs> All right. So sixty three says three less than the sum. translate this into English, it, it just, tra there's no players, there's no variable finding, the sum number is the variable, this is a, like one step away from math, it's like pseudo math, so remind me, what's 3 less than 10? 10 minus 3, 7, what's 3 less than Jeff? Jeff minus, Jeff minus 3, I like it, right, so what's 3 less than the sum of blah, I got to know what the sum of blah is first, 
and then take three away from it, right? So what, how do you write the sum of two and some number? Good. What am I dealing with? I'm summing two and some number, and again, you can use any letter you want, so we'll use x again. So I'm summing two and some number, two and x, and I'm summing them. So that's two plus x. And then it says three less than that sum. Minus three. Minus three. Minus three. Is, and of course that's the magic word for equals six. Right? And then that's not very evil. Right? So two minus three is negative one. Add one, you get x is seven. Cool. But it does sound a little weird when you compare it to the other word problems because it's actually a little bit easier in a way. It's just direct translation. But that less than is the most evil phrase. And it's not math's fault. It's our grammar that doesn't have it going the right way around. Math just does what it can. Right? I know I'm always defending math, but it's too bad. It's true. Okay, all right. Uh, and Trent, what you got? Wait, let me clear your space. Okay. Wait, wait, so is this a word problem or what's. Yeah, <laughs> You're right. Well, you can actually, when you're online, chapter 9, I put all the sections together. Okay. But if you look at the little uh, title of the problem, it actually has 9 point, it probably says 6 in there, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so this is good. This is good. This is an example of another section that's got its own word problems associated with it, right? So this is section 9, 6, where we did factoring. So, let me catch up. Base, 4 centimeters greater than the height. The base is, I'm sorry? The, the area is 48 centimeters squared. Yeah, the area, and I missed what you said about the base. Oh, okay. So I don't know why I wrote the bases. Right. Four centimeters greater than height. The area is forty-eight centimeters squared. All right. Cool. Find the dimensions, right? Right. right. All right. So the first place we got to start, and a really good thing, whenever you're in a, ma in ma a new math class, you look in the front of the book, and you look in the back of the book, and you'll notice in the back of the book they have geometric formulas, right? So if you forgot the area of a trapezoid, there's the area of a trapezoid. Right? If you're like, I don't think I ever knew the area of a trapezoid. That's bad, but it's there. If you forgot. Uh, but a triangle, if I call this the base and the height, if this is a rectangle that's you know sitting up, so this would be a height up the side, right? You guys semi with me? What would the area of that be? Yeah, it would be base times height. If I made a triangle out of it, I'd chop it in half, so now what's the area of that triangle? How, how much of the BH is the triangle? Half. half of it. So the area of a triangle would be one half based on side. I don't know if you guys remember that formula for the triangle. Because any triangle is somehow half of a four sided figure, and any four sided figure, the, the area is based on side. So any triangle is one half based on side. How are we doing so far? I don't know if that sounds familiar. If it doesn't, you go to the back of the book, you can look at it and get the formula. Right? I can't do this problem without knowing the formula that's talking about what it's asking me about. So it tells me the area is this. Let me draw my triangle here. It tells me the height and the base. The base is 4 centimeters greater than the height. So which one is going to be just x? The height. Good. The height, because then the base is 4 centimeters greater than that. So how do I write the base? Yeah, x plus 4, right? It's 4 centimeters more, greater. It's not times, right? It's just 4 more, 4 greater. So it's x plus 4. So this will be x for the height, and this is x plus 4 for the base. Let me stop there for a second. Really good to draw a picture for a geometric problem. 
Do you see though, I, this is actually an entirely different section. We're going to have to use an entirely different way to solve the equation. But the idea is the same. Somebody's x, somebody's building off of that, right? Draw a picture if it makes sense. Now, how do I represent this? What's the formula for the area of a triangle? See, so it's not the sum. It's not when you add them, you get something. It's the area of this triangle is 48. So what's the area of this triangle? It's one half the base, which is times the height. Let me stop there for a second. This is a perfect example of one where somebody could totally do this problem just guessing values for x until you get it right. Good for you. You're not going to get many points for that, if any. Right? I've got to see the algebra behind it. You'll go into the problem knowing what the answer should be. Does everybody see where that came from? Once you've labeled the triangle and you know what the area of any triangle is, you can write what the area of that specific triangle is. One half, the base times the height. And what is that supposed to be? 48. So I said it equal to 48. But I desperately want you to understand the process I've used so far is no different than what we were doing before. Yeah? It says, wait, we're looking at length, when we're each of the area, which is centimeters squared. Does that do anything? Yeah, area is centimeters squared. But yep. the length we're just looking at the centimeters. Like True, the but what how, well, the base is so many centimeters, right? Right. And the height is so many centimeters. Okay. So what's centimeter times centimeter? Centimeter squared. That's why I gotta multiply to get an area so that my units end up squared. Just like the squares on the floor, that's why it's area in squared units, because I can cover it with squares. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. So what's a really good first step based off of something we said earlier today? Get rid of two. Yeah, I don't like the one half. It's in an equation, so I can get rid of it. So the first thing I can do is Multiply by two. Both sides. Math. Right? Get that the hell out of there. Don't like it. So what can I do here? Good. X squared plus 4X. Good. Man. Well, that sucks. I don't know the color to die. Equals, what's this? 96. Good. Now, what method do I have to use to solve this? We actually focused on this kind of thing last time. Yeah, exactly. What part of this tells me I've got a factor? To the square. If that wasn't there, I could just divide by 4 and be done with it. Because all my x's would be together. Can I get my x's together? No, they're not even like terms. Cool with that. See? So that's why I have to have this other way to do it. I'm going to take that, make it zero, subtract it over, and then I can factor it. So I don't want anybody to say anything. I want you guys to try and factor this. So subtract 96, so I get x squared. Show you, let me show you something too. So 12 and 8 is correct because 12 times 8 is 96. And as long as the 12 is positive, it's going to work. But watch this. This is so funny to me that nobody ever teaches this. I need two numbers that do what? Multiply by, multiply by this. Yeah. Add to be that. We normally find two numbers that multiply by this and then we check to see if they add to be that, right? Why do we have to do that? Let me find two numbers that add to be this. And then check to see them all. It's easier to get two numbers to add to be four. Now, the two numbers have to be negative, positive. You with me? So when I think about adding to be four, they've got to kind of like subtract to be four because one of them is negative. So, for example, 10 and negative 6 add to be four, don't they? But what they multiply to be? Negative 60. So it's no good. It's too small, right? So then I go up. It's a little bit more... Uh, rigid of a process than trying to factor a big ass number. So this is a big ass number and this is a tiny little number. I'm going to start. This is 2. 
I'm going to go 20 and 22, multiply, see if they work. 24 and 26. I mean, you kind of see what I'm saying here? I, I don't have to start with this. I can start with that. I just need two numbers that do both. Who cares what you make them do first? So that didn't work, so maybe I can go up to 12 and 8, and of course we know that that multiplies to be negative 96. Check. If you have no idea what I just said, but you're able to factor that, perfect. I'm just trying to show you a different way you can do some of these. Yeah. Now, I don't know if have to work. There's two combinations that work. Like, I can never happen. I can never happen. It's like the DNA of the number, right? If you thought there's two, they're actually two different people. Two different things. All right, I like it. How'd you do the floor again? Oh, so I know I need a positive and a negative number, right? Mm -hmm. And I know they have to add to be four. Mm -hmm. So 10 and negative six add to be four, okay. but they don't multiply by 96. Too small, let me go up higher. 12 and negative 8 add to be 4. And they multiply negative 9, kick ass, right? I don't know if any of you guys see what I'm saying there, but it's never taught that way. I hate that. Who cares which one of these you made true first? Anyway, I'll stop. So now, how does this thing factor? Yeah, x plus 12, x minus 8. So what are my two possible answers? Which one of these has a major problem? The negative 12, because we're talking about a triangle. If you tell me that your triangle is negative 12 centimeters tall, you're freaking me out. Probably the same person that found infinity, right? <laughs> you're like, whoa, you're in a different dimension. So that, we got to throw out, just because math is totally cool with that answer, the physical reality that it's a real triangle, it's got to be a positive side length, right? The number negative 12 works, but the length negative 12 doesn't. So if it's x equals 8, is that all I need? Yes. Oh, no. So 8, what would be the height? 8 centimeters. centimeters. So don't make everything in the world feet. Be careful. Right. And then what's the base? 12, 12 centimeters. And he's noticed how the negative 12? So one answer would be negative 12 and negative 8, but we can't have that triangle. That is a very freaky triangle. Yes, ma'am? Um, would it be wrong if we did, like, the quadratic formula, or was that what they did? Uh, if you did it for a problem like this, yes. Um, if you do it all the damn time, yes. You've got to factor when that's the best way to do it, and factoring is the best way to do this. Don't you overuse it. That's what I'm trying to say. But if you try to factor it and you're like, I don't think it's going to work, then you do quadratic, I'm happy with that. That's fine. Show me a little bit of an attempt to factor it. You with me? Yeah. Okay. Just don't use, well, you could use quadratic everywhere and not know how to factor at all. That's not good. I don't like that. It's not good for you. All right. Maybe, maybe, maybe. All right, cool. So that was nice. That was from section 9.6. The other thing I want to, talk about today. So we've officially finished 9-2. Uh, we actually finished 9-6 before us factoring. I think I still have to talk about cubes. We always want to look more at cubes anyway. Um, it's amazing. Time just flies. I still need to talk about graphing because I, I think we did a little bit when we did the warm-ups. Uh, but I really want to make sure we understand slope and y-intercept and all that kind of stuff. And I don't think we really did that in depth. And then 9-4 is uh, substitution elimination, if I say those things, does that sound familiar? Systems of equations, when you have x and y, and you can substitute or eliminate to, to figure out what they are. Um, thankfully, I gave us until Thursday to get through chapter 9, because it looks like it will take us till then to get through this. Because I want the rest of the time now, we got to go on a little quick little field trip. It's only going to take like 10 minutes. So hopefully I don't lose too many of you. Yes. Oh yeah, that was the graphic calculator one, right? No. If I ever assign one, that was just my mistake. So do this for me. Go out the door. Go towards the tech ball, and let me run out in front of you guys so I can lead you.